Um, I think Kentucky is a team uh, that we usually have that conversation about, right? But to me, this year, they are about as old as it gets in college basketball, not just because they have the big fella, Oscar Sheewe, coming back. Um, T.O., I'm going to you first on this one. All right, Kentucky. they got to be the favorite to win the SEC, right? Are they a favorite to win a national title? Just how good do you see this team being? For the record, Oscar Sheewe, the first reigning player of the year to come back since Tyler Hansborough, 2008-2009 season. Yeah, I played against that Tyler Hansborough. He was pretty good. And that, that team uh, w- was really tough to stop, not just because of him, but because of Wayne Ellington, Todd, all those guys. I digress. I moved back to Kentucky. Now you look at Oscar Sheboy. He is a manimal on the boards. Almost as good a rebounder as Patrick. Like I'm just, that, that's, that's high praise. So let's talk about that real quick. Almost as good a rebounder as him. But you also <laughs> bring back Severe Wheeler, who led the SEC in assists and was top five in the nation, getting the ball around. Does he have limitations? Sure, he's 5'7 and can't throw it in the ocean. At least he couldn't last year. He might be able to do it this year. But I look at this squad going forward. They, they add that freshman class that Calipari has done so well with. He's always getting these five-star guys. He's bringing them in. But now you're mixing in some older vets. C.J. Frederick's going to be a big piece. You're going to add some more floor spacing. It's going to be good for somebody like Severe. And then you also get Antonio Reeves, who was a big-time scorer at Illinois State. Thank like, you know. you're going to, he's going to be able to operate in more space. He's a really good passer. He finds ways to finish, but last year it was a little bit too congested, and I felt like him and Ty Ty Washington kind of need, both needed the ball to be effective. Ty Ty did well. I get that. But he was at his best as a pick-and-roll ball handler. This season, the additions of C.J. Frederick is going to make Oscar that much better. Antonio Reeves is going to make Oscar that much better. And I think the biggest beneficiary is going to be Severe Wheeler. I don't see why they're not the favorites, but in my opinion, guys, there's three teams at the top. And one of those three teams uh, is younger than everybody else, so you're going to see their best ball later. But I feel like we're in an upside-down universe. You look at Kentucky, you look at Tennessee, those are like the oldest teams in the league. Like, you could have told me that five years ago, Pat. Well, I, I certainly have to agree with you coming into this up this next season. Yes, it's an older Kentucky team. Last year's Kentucky team was the oldest Coach Khaled ever uh, had in his tenure at Kentucky coming off their 9-16 and 16 season. It's still so strange to think about that. But looking at a team that uh, for Coach Khaled has been seven years since his last Final Four appearance, and we, we know um, it's hard to make it that far anyway, but obviously we're all going to look on paper and say, yeah, Kentucky can make the final four uh that i had high expectations last year uh of a, a high number of teams in the sec making it to the lead eight and kentucky making it to the final four last year with one of the best teams that i had seen them play with but as we know when tournament time comes anything can happen but you're looking at a kentucky team that is returning they i think um, if i read this correctly 20 made threes from every returner last year so Being able to knock down the three-point ball is going to help them, obviously, spread the floor. I really like that Cason Wallace can play off the ball. Um, He does a great job coming off screens, even on the ball. He has an awesome floater and pull-up jump shot going to his right. Uh, The fact that this is a team that shoots so many two-point shots, obviously, that is a key for Oscar Shibwe to just clean up a lot of boards. But the dark horse for this team, obviously, I I, Xavier Wheeler – uh, is a, I wish I had a point guard like that when I was playing. That was just looking to give the feed me the ball every time. But Jacob Toppin, um, I think he's going to make a huge jump this year and be a dark horse X factor for this Kentucky team. Um, but, you know, the, the report came out uh, re- recently. Coach Cal is saying, hey, it's going to take some time for this team to mesh. Let's just enjoy the ride. Winning takes a full commitment of everybody and for it to, you know, if, if they can stay healthy, if everyone can stay healthy, uh, obviously, if Oscar is not on the floor for foul trouble or whatever reason, the th- dynamic of this team changes. But, I mean, no one – when Oscar was on the floor last year, no one could stop him, and I can't see anyone stopping him this year either. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just going to text Scotty Wilbekin right now and say that Patrick Young didn't think you were a good enough <laughs> Hey, Scotty guard. wasn't passing it. Let's let's not be naive let's now. Let's be real, man. Like, Scotty wasn't passing it. He was a good player. <laughs> Scotty wasn't passing it. He's still not passing it. Is he in Turkey? He's got to be he's, in Turkey somewhere. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in Turkey now. He's not passing it now either. Yeah, he's in Fenerbahce. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's killing it out there. So you know what I like about this team, guys? And, and, and I want to get your opinion on this first, T.O., then P.Y., we can go to you. The, the, I love the way that it's built in the sense that you have, a, you have a point guard that is clearly a point guard. You have a five-man that is clearly a five-man. And then it seems like Coach Cal is kind of leaning into this idea of 
getting multiple different wings out there, guys that are switchable, guys that can be fours, can also be twos, can also space the floor. One of the knocks I think that I've had on him is he kind of plays like this old school style where uh, he tends to lean into having a couple big men on the floor. Um, and it feels like this is a little bit of, of a more modern team. I mean, you look at Chris Livingston, you look at Jacob Toppin, even Case and Wallace. Like, I know he's a guard, but like that dude's tough. That dude's going to get he's out there tough. and defend. So I, I, it feels like, you know, this is a team that's built more in a uh, in a modern sense, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, it absolutely makes sense. But it, you even look at those forwards that you reference, uh, Jacob Toppin, if he can take a step, I mean, that would be huge. I'm a big fan of Damon Collins. Like, I, I think he is going to take a step this year. Super athletic. I think he weighed like a buck 65 at 6'10 last year. Like, it yeah, was an issue. Say, for I hope he gained some weight. Please gain some weight. Yeah. I wish I, I mean, had it, that problem. It was an issue <laughs> like last year. But if if he makes strides in that area, like, he could be a really good player. And then Chris Livingston, guys, like, he was a big time shooter at Oak Hill. Now, that wasn't necessarily his MO when he was playing AAU. Of course, he was playing on this We All Can Go team that didn't really care about winning all that much. That being said, he was a good shooter at Oak Hill. Uh, the, the the funny thing about the dribble drive offense, and I was at, I, I humble brag here, I went to Serbia to watch a coaching clinic where Calipari was at, and a lot of those things. That, you know how many times I've heard this story, Py? Which one? <laughs> this is the first I don't tell you everything. Me. First time for me. <laughs> hey, look, I, I don't tell you everything, Rob. I don't tell you everything. But if you look at what they're trying to do, really, what makes the most sense is having a four man that could put it on the floor a little bit. And him kind of getting to that idea with Livingston, he can do it. He's a big body guy, six seven, six eight, but he's got really broad shoulders. So he's going to be able to play some four for you. Damian Collins has that ability. Jacob Toppin has shown that when he's playing well, he has that ability. So there should be more room on the floor with guys that can put it on and attack a closeout because that's all they're trying to do anyway. Him adapting to those things and having some four men who can step out and obviously use the dribble to get to the paint, I think is huge as well. Patrick, I want to hit you with this, actually. So you've you've experienced both being the five-star, highly touted McDonald's All-American coming in. You were also the guy that was the senior on a team that won a lot of basketball games. I think you were, what, 36 and, and three your senior year, something like that, made it to a something final like four. That. So what what kind of – with Kaysan coming in and with Livingston coming in, you have two guys that are going to have a certain level of expectation when it comes to shots, minutes, touches, points they should get. But on this team, they're very much going to be asked to maybe say just playing a role is too strong, but they're not coming in to be the guy because they're joining a team that has the guy in all of college basketball and Big Sheep, who, by the way, we're going to get to in an interview uh, with Jeff Gunman here in about three minutes. Yeah, no, it's it's very interesting. Uh, coming in, I think with any instance for a freshman coming in, there is a bit of a wow factor because this is the first time you're going to experience some real scouting where teams are taking away your weaknesses, those things that are going to be exposed, uh, playing against physical bodies that know the game and know the ins and outs of how to, what to take away from you, how to uh, create advantages and disadvantages. But, you know, I think Coach Cal has done such a fantastic job of just ingraining this mindset of team and winning because when the team does well, everyone is doing well. Um, I don't think Coach Cal, you know, don't, probably the only time he's had to deal with selfish guys was that 9-16 and 16 year where, uh, you could kind of see that guys just weren't bought in to the system. Um, but I think obviously have, but you look at Oscar, you look at Savir, you look at Jacob and these are, they're just such guys to like, you, you listen to them in an interview, you're like, man, who, who doesn't want to be a good teammate to this guy? Because you know, one, they're working their, their butts off. Uh, they want to win and they're doing all the right things. And uh, it, it just would be hard for me unless somebody is just so caught, but you know, I don't think coach Cal is bringing in, uh, after that nine and 16 nightmare that I'm not going to stop repeating because obviously for uh, whatever reason, um, just having, having guys that are bought into the system, uh, you know, that can come and get to figure that out right away with the, the madness of the transfer portal, but it's going to take time um, for these freshmen. But I love case and Wallace. He's so aggressive, especially on the defensive defense travels. Like he, the way he moves his feet, he's going to guard the best player on the opposing team night in and night out. And he's going to be, I can see him being first team all defense. If I don't know, are we still doing first team all, all defense? Yeah, but in the anymore? SEC is like 16 guys they put on that first Yeah, I know. Team. It's a freaking right. participation <laughs> right. trophy to get on all conference teams in your conference, Pat. Like, you actually what you make a really good point, somebody? though. 
<laughs> tell Sankey they they ain't all that good. Like all, all right. of them ain't that good. Like somebody call Sankey, get a hold of him. He's changing everything <laughs> up. He needs to change his all teams back. Like yeah, what are we you doing? know what? Stop worrying about expanding the NCAA tournament. How about you shrink your all conference teams in the SEC, please? Yeah, Just everybody do don't get a trophy. It's cut through yeah. for a reason. It's cut through for a reason. That's exactly, right. man. See, you get it. Um, you actually made a good point on Shiway there, Patrick. One that I don't think people recognize enough. When you're when your star is willing to do the dirty work, and and when your star, when your superstar, when you're the guy that gets all of the NIL money, the biggest name, the reigning player of the year. When he's the guy that's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be down there. I'm going to get a bunch of rebounds. I'm going to get in the way. I'm going to block some shots. That kind of sets a tone for the team where the, the the little things are going to win. You don't have to get shots to matter, right? And I think people uh, people on a roster seeing that level of sacrifice, um, it, it helps rebuild the chemistry and the culture that that this Kentucky team had you know, in the, in the mid two thousands and kind of, or the mid 2010s, it may be kind of lost in a couple of years recently. So I think that that matters. And look, Shibwe, one of the best kids that you are going to to yeah. run into, even if you are a Louisville fan, I think you find it very hard to hate this kid as a person. You don't have to like him when he's got that, that, that blue one, but you'll find it very difficult to dislike this kid as a person.